Hey everyone, it's Kong, and this is a quick look at how I'm building my tiny Jessica, the Light of Genesis. If you watched my last video on the Sage of the Trees, then you know this isn't a traditional how to build so and so guide, in the sense that I'm not going to go into crazy levels of detail about all the options you have for building her. That's not really my style. Some people love to spend a ton of time theory crafting and optimizing, and that's cool, but some people just want to have a quick peek to make sure they're on the right track. So I'm just going to go over the basic decisions that I made when setting up my own Tiny Jess, and if you like them, that's great, go ahead and like this video. If not, that's also totally fine, let me know in the comments what you're doing differently, and we can have a discussion about it. The more options, the better. So from the top, first her skills. Her 3 cost skill, Light's Embrace, is pretty much required. This is the skill that lets her act again every two turns, which is pretty much the basis of her playmaking potential. There might be some rare cases where we just want to bring a bunch of her cheap single target skills and keep on firing, but 99% of the time this 3C is central. Next we're going to want an assist skill that'll let her trigger that act again. You trigger the act again by using an assist skill on a turn and ending your turn adjacent to an ally. So most of the time I'm planning to use teleport, uh, simply because the potential of this skill in PvP is just wild. You can teleport yourself up to your team and act again, or you can teleport your teammates forward and so on. So in some cases, like if you don't have anyone else on your team who can provide a buff, then you might want to take Strengthen instead, which is another cheap little assist skill that she has that she can buff herself. For her last slot, you can either bring uh, Holy Light, which is a basic single target spell but also has some uh, bonus healing for your lowest party member, or you also have your choice of Fireball and Lightning Strike and Freeze Strike, so you can pick based on what kinds of enemies you think you're more likely going to be facing in a particular match. So next we have her class, and her class enchants are pretty straightforward. I jacked up her int and her bulk. Not too interested in trying to play around with skill um, for someone who has a base 84 skill anyway. Getting crits is not going to be the, the main critical path that you have to one-shotting your opponents. So for her actual class paths, she has a Mage Path and a Holy Path. The Holy Path has slightly more bulk, but the Mage class has much higher int, which is the most important thing uh, to try to focus on if you're trying to one-shot more enemies. The additional bulk of the Holy class is also counterbalanced by the fact that she'd be squishier versus common Judge Talisman threats like Ares. She also has this little dangling side class, um, and I think if you're planning on using her, it's obviously going to be worth unlocking it because it gets you that lightning skill, and it also gives you some extra hit points and some extra int. So every little bit of int is critical, so definitely worth throwing a runestone there if you've got another one. Okay, next I'm going to look at her equipment. So before I get into the piece by piece, overall, I think her best enchantment is going to be Breeze. Breeze is a solid overall enchantment for a DPS unit because of the increased damage dealt, um, but it's extra special on a playmaker like Jess. A big part of her playstyle is using her teleport and her act again to get the jump on mispositioned or ill-prepared enemies. So when she uses an assist skill next to an ally and procs her act again, she actually also has the potential to trigger her Breeze right then and there. And this allows her to yeet even further into the action, uh, perhaps reaching some unprotected backline foes. So if you're tapped out on Breeze, some people might make an argument for Clock, which could allow her access to her 3C more quickly after its initial use, but to me it feels a little bit wasteful since she does have some slight cooldown reduction built into her talent. And you're not going to be clocking your assist skill anyway, and then her other 1C skills refresh fairly quickly, so you'd really be using those clock enchants for that one 3C. And furthermore, clock I find is just as in high demand as Breeze is, so you're not really saving yourself on enchants there. Okay, so for her weapon, I like the Scepter of Divinity. Um, one of her niches is to attack with impunity from range. Her talent lets her stack up to two additional range that never wears off, so getting even more range out of her weapon just gives her that much more freedom to select a target and maintain good positioning at the same time. 
It doesn't have the big int boosts of some of the other options though, so if you're less concerned about range and making sure you're always able to hug your tank, or if you're just missing a scepter, then a red moon is a solid general pick. Pale Staff is probably her other best weapon, because it boosts her single target damage, uh, and also has a good chance to provide her own debuff to trigger her Heart Bond's bonus damage. Even something like Astaroth could be a good meme choice, depending on what's going on, on with the rest of your team or your opponents. Uh, not going to recommend that as a top pick by any means. But between the Scepter and the Pale Staff, I think I'm going to have to deploy her in a few more Apex matches just to see how often I appreciate the range versus the extra damage. I can actually see this being an issue of her star level. So because mine's only four star, she doesn't have the potential to get that extra point of range uh, from her talent. So I can see myself leaning more towards Pale Staff after I do get her six star and squeeze that extra last tile of range. Uh, but until then, I might need the Scepter just to make up that difference. So I'm going Scepter for now and keeping the Pale Staff in my back pocket just in case. For her armor, Tenyo's robe is always a solid default pick for any mage, and as always, Death's robe is a solid backup choice to try to help shore her up against any assassins um, with that 40% crit reduction. I'm sure I have a few Death's robes in here. Placeholder ones on Rachel. For her helm, obviously it's really hard to argue against the Tenyo's headdress with its potentially game-winning random buffs, and this is especially true with a character like Jess, who has the ability to act multiple times in a turn, bestowing potentially game-winning random buffs on two allies at the same time. So nothing better in this slot for her. If you don't have a bunch of Tenyo's headdresses, you could also use anything um, that causes sneaky effects on the enemies when you do get that act again and get in range, like a Soul Stealer headdress, for example. For accessories, I definitely plan on giving her the Twilight Star. The Prick of Pre-Battle Fixed Damage will disable the damage reduction from Last Rites, which, for example, lets her one-shot a Juggler with Stone Colossus troops. If he opts for Lobster Behemoths instead, then he's more vulnerable to Elwyn on the other hand, so definitely don't expect to be able to deploy Jess and Elwyn in the same match very often. Now Twilight Star is newish and rare, so if you don't have one to spare for her, then I think you'd simply want to load up with an int boosting accessory of choice. So something like a uh, Holy Ring could do that job for you, or a uh, uh, Dimensional Jewel won't really do too much extra for her since she already pretty much has Dimensional Jewel built into her talent. But if you just need it for the stats, then there you go. So next are Soldiers. It's really hard to go wrong with Sorceresses here because they fly, they give her a little bit of extra flexibility with her, with her mobility, and they also just have great attack potential. So sorceresses are going to be the easy pick for me. I also have them built up, and I have my mage tree built up fairly well. So no other real alternative for me. And finally, her appearance. Her Echo of Light skin is called Nutcracker Conductor. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's anything to write home about. It's a marching band skin with little teddy bear buddies. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on my screen right here because it's not huge, but you can see these little teddy bears following behind her in the chibi sprite. I do like skins that have little sidekicks built in, but she doesn't have her whip in this skin, and it's just not different enough or crazy enough to make me want to run it over her default skin. Knowing Zilong Games, she'll be a prime pick for another skin from the Macho Lotto or the shop or an event at some point in the future anyway, so we'll keep our eyes peeled and see what kind of crazy things they can cook up for her. So yeah, that's that's uh, overall how I have my Light of Genesis set up. Uh, fairly standard with her factions, she fits in great with my Glory Heavy Box right now, and the synergy is only going to get that much better when Hilda brings another Langrisser Reincarnation buff. Um, assuming I am able to summon Hilda. Like I said at the start of this video, hopefully this is helpful for someone who just wants to duck in and take a quick look at what's going on. Make sure they just have a rough rundown of what to set aside uh, for a basic Jess. 
If you have any questions about anything I didn't mention, or if you have any wildly different ideas or opinions about how to build her, then definitely leave a comment. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful, and hopefully you're all enjoying the light of Genesis as much as I have been so far. Uh, just not enjoying her against me in Apex Arena, please. She is scary. So thanks for watching, everyone. Take care out there, and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy Langrissing, everyone.